welcome to another edition of Room for Improvement. Today, improving the look of your conservatory with some plants. How to create a dream room for a nine-year-old. Russell goes on another DIY rescue mission. But first, a unique bed sit. Any of the bed sits I've stayed in have been dull and dismal places. But we're about to meet a lady who has a reputation for transforming bedsits into something more than just a little different. Come and have a look. Denise. Hello. Come in. Come in. Oh, this is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. This is honestly amazing. You must be a wild woman in pink. Well, I like pink because it's the colour of love. Or, uh, no, I like pink full stop, yeah. but uh, I used to wear black a lot and then I changed to red and, and now I'm settled into pink for the rest of my days. So where I did you start here? This used to be very dark red and uh, I wanted to do, I wanted to lighten it up a bit. So I started it because I sponge everything now, I wouldn't dream of, well, I, sometimes I use a brush. A lot of it is mistakes. It's all out of jumble sales. Uh, now these tablecloths, for example, I dyed. This top one was the most awful grey, and I'm not a grey person. You know? <laughs> Where would you find all these things? Mostly jumble sales. That butterfly now, for example, I got yesterday for a pound. Uh, that was that was a pound shop. That wasn't a jumble sale. And people are very nice, you know, and they they throw out a lot of kind of lovely stuff, which you might not think is particularly good, but when you paint it, gilt. I gilled everything, you see. I put a bit of gold on, like this butterfly it was black, and I covered all the black with gold. And, uh, and the door, now the door is an accident, because behind that flower there, that middle flower, yeah. the real flower, well the silk flower, there's an old, the remains of an old doorbell, which uh, doesn't work anymore, it's obsolete, and I can't get it out because I'm not much good with a screwdriver. <laughs> so I put this rose on it, right, and then I thought, ah, I can paint these flowers, you know, so I just painted the flowers. I love mirrors as well, I use mirrors, I always have mirrors, and it's got nothing to do with vanity or looking at myself. In Create fact, space. This, the, the lighting is such that you can't see you. you have, I can't see myself in any of the mirrors properly. But um, they, you know, they, they create space, and because the flat is very tiny. Marianne, how did you get this look? Well, there's there's been a false ceiling there for years. You know, one of those hardboard things with little holes in it. In fact, the little holes have been very useful because these tassels I've put up with paper clips. Now it's very. I couldn't get thumbtacks or nails through it. I'm I'm so I'm technical. But I, then I thought paper clips, you know, so I put the paper clips through the holes and then hung the tassels. So this is um, muslin, which I tie dyed and uh, hand stitched because I don't have a machine <laughs> and hung up. And then I got the tassels in a charity shop. They were in a basket outside, everything 50 pence. And there they are, beautiful. And I love them and they're just right. I didn't know what to, what to do with it, you know. Well, they look lovely. Well, after seeing yeah. this one, I can't wait to see the rest of it. All right. Oh, I have another ceiling in here. <laughs> it's an accident as well. Whoa, look at this. It's like a boudoir. Yes, and, and caravan and all these things that has been called when do, oh gosh, the ceiling, is it a cloud? Yeah, that's, that's accidental again, most things are accidental, but the room was white at one point. Between being red it, and these colours, it was white. And I started to paint the place when I came back to live here from Australia, and I thought, uh, I can't live with white, no way. So I stood up on a chair with this paint which somebody gave me and was the wrong colour, and started to kind of brush it, you know and realised it was all filthy and rotten and anyway and I should wash it and I should and, and so I did a bit you know as far as I could reach with the chair and then I lay down and I looked I thought oh god it's a cloud you know it's like we got really carried away and excited there and I thought right let's make it into a proper cloud which I did it was very difficult actually doing all this freehand you know to keep you know with no support and then I uh, then I stuck up the stars with spit <laughs> <laughs> now and again we get catch a falling star, you know, <laughs> and uh, so that's that ceiling, and uh, I like it. I think I like it. I like lying in bed watching it. Yeah. But then you've you've obviously so, made the 
And the fireplace. fireplace, the fireplace I did years and years and years ago, it was a, a, the most hideous kind of either pre-war or post-war, I can never remember, kind of beige, you know, fawn coloured tiles. And it is a real fireplace and um, I covered it with polyfill. Then the pieces of broken mirror gilted all that and that's just watercolours actually, all that sprinkling around. And, and then if you put a brush, having done the little bits of mirror, that with the gold, then if you just brush over the top of it, all the edges, the sharp edges, take the, the gilt, the gilt. Do so you find you have to be very tidy when you're living in a room this Yes, sort of and I am a very, in fact, I'm an extremely tidy person. It's interesting to see the way you use the wall to hang things. Um, yeah. You've got hats hanging on the walls, yeah. necklaces. <laughs> well, they, I've got, you see, in a limited space, you don't, you don't have much room to put anything. So I hang the hats on the wall because uh, no, number one, because I like them anyway, and I like looking at them. And uh, number two, it's a way of, of storing them, you know, and the, the same with the jewellery. And do you ever throw anything away? I do, but then I usually see it in jumble sales and buy it back again. <laughs> Marianne, when you walk into a room like yours, it's guaranteed to put a smile on your face. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> general public liked to hear music on the underground and moves were made uh, originally uh, in the late 80s early 90s to try and put a scheme together that would work but there was actually a statute in the bylaws that didn't allow any musician to play on the London Underground or any railway network across Britain this got changed in the mid 90s when the Railways Act was changed and May last year we managed to uh, put the uh, licensed busking scheme into place we hold auditions every two weeks. We see about 30 to 40 people, and we get a vast variety of musicians. Alive, alive, oh, oh. Alive, alive, oh, oh. Crying cock up, and mock up. Alive, alive, oh, oh. We have a uh, judging panel that's made up of people from London Underground and some people from the music industry. I first set my eyes on sweet Molly Malone. And I'm 65. The most important thing in my life is travelling. I go away about five times a year and because I don't have any money, I have to get out and busk. And I adore singing. I can sing, so I might as well get out and sing and collect with my hat because I ain't gonna have a free show. <laughs> and this way, for years and years and years, I've paid for my flight and my room. This summer, I'll go to Mykonos. I fancy going back there because Mykonos is smart. It means I can wear, with aplomb, all my gear and my feathers or whatever and the glitter. I love glitter. been up for 36 hours without sleeping. I am finally on the boat, the high speed job to Mykonos. Three more hours and I'm there. <sighs> Sweet dreams, Mary Ann. May all your problems be solved now. Here we are. Welcome. Thank you. Here we are. Now, one for me and one for him. Whoever he's going to be, I don't know. Tonight I'm wearing one of my pinks. Pink is the colour of love and it's the colour of healing. So I've been told and I accept that and believe it because it makes me feel good. Oh yes, sprightly young thing now. <laughs> because I specialise in old love songs and because I play this little harp thing, I go to really good restaurants, I ask permission and expect them to say yes. Is it possible to sing here? 